All right. May May the what was it again? May the sixth, fifth, sixth. May the May the sixth. May the sixth, two thousand thirteen. It's a uh, Monday. Live from Austin, Texas. Live from Austin, Texas. Live. Here with Jazz David hands. Favor, who I'm really happy and grateful to say is now a member of the Brotherhood. Welcome, David. Glad to meet all y'all too. Anytime you're through Austin, drop around. We'll have some fun. So David is a good old boy. He's got a beautiful home here in Austin, Texas. Yeah. yeah. Um, I find myself like speaking with an accent after I stayed with him and his beautiful wife for a few days. But I was uh, Sean invited, um, <clears throat> accepted the the invitation that I had extended or put forth for David to be a member of the Brotherhood, which I'm really grateful. Yeah. Thanks, for. Sean. Yeah. Thank you, Sean. And uh, I said to David, hey, take a look at some of the other brothers' intros, because I'd love you know, you to write a great introduction. Don't be shy, please. David has a ton of experience uh, <clears throat> for longer than he could even believe. Uh, working, Can't be that long. Working, working in, uh, in the web world, um, in software development and hardware development, and also doing um, just a lot of online development, um, as well as the superfood world. Um, and so I said, hey, David, could you, you know, make sure, you know, write a bio reference some of the other ones that exist. And David came up with the idea to do a video intro, which I thought was awesome. I thought it would be way more fun for you guys. So, uh, <clears throat> we've kind of come up with a little, a little, uh, we got a cheat sheet. We got a cheat sheet to go through so that we, <laughs> we make sure to grab everything. But we thought we would begin rather than sharing David's background or who he is by having David share some awesome value with you guys. Cool. Um, so one of the things like David mentions to me all the time offhandedly stuff that he's using to automate his business <clears throat> that I spend a lot of money on every month that he spends virtually nothing on, uh, which is awesome. Really making a point to come by if you can. Um, and so I was like, David, you got to share some of the stuff that you just mentioned to me offhandedly. Uh, you know, first of all, you should probably make it into a product, but maybe we could share it with, with the brother. Give right me now. one. Something so else. one of the examples I wrote down here was camping on the Google oh. Webmaster. Yeah, so so script. so page camping you can use on your own site to make sure your site pages are even working, and I also camp on the uh, webmaster, the Google Webmaster blog, which camp means that the piece of software runs like every week and says, well, since the last time I ran till today, has there been any change? Yeah. So basically, for those of you that are you know are, have sites online that you use to make money, you know obviously you want those to be up to date with all of Google's um, protocols. As much which as is possible. which means harebrained schemes they come up. Which with. means yeah, which means crazy stuff that they come up with. But a lot of people wrestle with this. There's entire SEO masterminds that I know you've been a part of in the past. I don't know if you're still. They make my head spin. But yeah, you know, it's, it's it's crazy the amount of details that go on about this. Yeah. And, and Dave and I were talking about it the other day in that you know the ultimate realization that both you and I have had, having spent a lot of time, a lot of money on this, hiring teams, working with companies that oh, yeah. are supposed to do this, that really it actually comes down to. A, a lot more simplicity, simplicity mm -hmm. than I could have ever conceived to begin with. It's really just ensuring that all the recommendations that Google has for you, and this isn't everything by any, any means as a generalization, but a big chunk of it is ensuring that you're doing and implementing all the updates that Google uh, notifies us of. But that can be a difficult thing to do because yeah. you don't want to be able, you don't want to have to sit there <clears throat> and try and keep track of it. So what David's done is he's created an automated tool for being able to quickly and easily find out exactly what the updates have been and just what those updates have been. Yeah. been. Now, he himself is his technical team. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. for those of you that have a tech team, you can take it and you can implement yeah, it. Yeah, and I actually didn't write this code. A really smart guy wrote it. It's called Web Secretary. And um, if you search for W-E-B-S-E-C for WebSec, um, I've been using this, I think, since pretty much when it came out in 2006. And it's a really nifty tool. I mean, you can camp on your competitors' pages to see when they change their offers. You can camp on your, like I run camps on my um, Amazon Kindle book pages to send me notifications when my Amazon sales rank changes. So, so cool. I see how my books are moving. That's cool. <laughs> and um, I camp on the Webmaster blog from Google to make sure I know what's happening there. I also camp on uh, different people's toss pages, terms of service. Because if somebody changes their toss, I'd like to know, you know, what they've... There's a lot of smart people out there, right? And instead of me... They're paying a lot of money for good lawyers. Yeah, they're paying a lot of good money for lots of good lawyers, and they've got lots of people they're working with, That's so they come idea. up with all sorts of random edge conditions they deal with in their tosses. 
So instead of me trying to figure out all the edge conditions, I just camp on a bunch of interesting tosses. Terms of service, by the way, is what that means. And you've just saved like the tens of thousands of dollars that went into that lawyer. Yeah. And so, you know, anytime I get a, like a long term of service, like a 40 page term of service from Facebook that one sentence changed, how do you, how would you know if they present you with a thing, now we've changed our terms of service? Well, well yeah, what is that? What element? And they say, now read this whole 40 pages and agree to it. And they may have said that, you know, you have to pledge your firstborn to it. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, so, I much prefer to have the little <clears throat> snippets. So explain to them what that means for the Google Webmaster. Um, oh, yeah, the, the Google Webmaster blog is basically... Um, you know, the harebrained trolls at, at uh, Google when they come up with a new algorithm change, or a lot of times they'll tell you when changes are coming and what you got to do to prepare. And so, you know, they'll, you know, maybe let you know that another round of Panda or Penguin or whatever is going to run and, and what they've changed that's going to bite you. And it's good to know that stuff. Yeah, for sure. And so I, I typically get, I think I've got that set at a weekly check. And so every week I get an email and if anything new or has changed on there, I get an email. Oh, the other thing I do is I camp on sitemap data. Like, um, if you're doing any kind of content on the web, there's all sorts of sites that um, manage information about microformats and sitemaps, especially like Google has all these weird sitemaps for like press releases and news releases, video sitemaps. Uh, mm -hmm. They're coming up with new audio sitemaps now. And if those things change, how would you ever know? No, I didn't I, even know that that existed. Oh yeah, how would you? So I, you know, once I come across these, I think, wow, that's interesting. There you go. I just I, learned just learned something new, right? There. <laughs> I, it would be good if once I fix this and implement mm -hmm. it on my site, if they change it, I should know that, right? Yeah. Oh, what am I going to have to hire some random person to go check all these websites? Every exactly. Time? I just have a piece of software just go so that's a and the way the beautiful thing that David was explaining to me beforehand is how it appears so basically oh, yeah, you get really an email cool. right it just has highlighted the changes only yeah. the changes yeah it's got a it's an email of the whole page and then there are bands of yellow so you can see exactly what sentence changed in the case of a toss or in the Google webmaster blog you'll see like this article yellow this one this one because they're all the new articles at the top and then the first one that's not yellow is the one you've already read. Uh -huh. So I know when I get that email, I got these one, two, three to read, and that's it. So maybe in the future, if so, for those of you watching this in the Brotherhood, um, if you think that this would be a value for you and your, your team and you want to relate to your tech team, oh, yeah, maybe, David, you could do a quick little jing or a screen capture, oh, yeah. maybe even a webinar yeah, Google that's, Hangouts. That's probably a... I guess I'll make a, make a list of... Yeah, well, here, I got this, I got this paper here. So, I'll make so a list of stuff to do. <clears throat> that's something that That'd David cool. could do for you guys, too. So I, I want that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I totally want that. Uh, so that, you know, our, so our tech teams could basically be aware of this software. It's a Perl script Dave was sharing with me. They can um, implement it and then get those updates. So, and that way, it's actually very easy and minor, ongoing, rather than these huge things that come out of left field, because ultimately, oh, yeah. ultimately what David has helped me realize is that sometimes, and this is a generalized statement, but sometimes these huge things that come out of left field are not really, uh, oftentimes, sometimes they are with Google, that's for sure, but oftentimes these things can be mitigated by implementing, you know, minor updates. Minor incremental updates. Minor yeah. incremental updates that they're sharing with us. So if you didn't know of that, there you go. That's just David favor. <laughs> <clears throat> sharing with us some, some great value. Cool. Yeah, thank you, David. Okay. What else? Kindle publishing benefits. What are the benefits oh, of yeah. publishing so, on Kindle? So I had a friend of mine explain Kindle to me here a few months ago, and I, I admit I was I've been completely asleep at the wheel about the whole Kindle thing and just, you know, it was a whole, it was another thing to do and no, I ain't got time. Now was this Hollis? Because Hollis has a brother as well. No, uh, well yeah, I, and I, I've been <clears> using Hollis's uh, and uh, Johnny. In fact I was just on the Skype talking with Johnny. Shout this out morning. to Brother Hollis Carter. Yep. Shout out Hollis. Um, yeah, you guys, you and Johnny doing your gig with Perfect Publishing. Man, what a great it's like a, it's like the WordPress codex, except it's the Kindle publishing codex. Everything you really require to know. Awesome. I, I actually don't know what a WordPress publishing codex. Is. Oh, the WordPress codex is this huge. It's like the the documentation for WordPress that's thousands of pages long. Okay. Everything you need to know. <clears throat> but anyway, this is the Kindle publishing codex. So, um, anyway, so uh, so Hollis, thanks for making it easy enough for me to understand how to get my head around Kindle. And so what I realized that all of this free content that I spit out every week, um, I should be getting paid for that. Mm -hmm. So I've just changed to publishing 
on Kindle, I've been working on some tools that let me publish mm -hmm. as fast on Kindle as I can publish blog posts. Exactly. So the benefit of that is yeah. David's helped to share with me. So David's been rocking in on Kindle. And here's another shout out to a brother that you don't know yet mm -hmm. uh, in person. Uh, his name's Tom Corson Knowles. Shout out to Tom Corson Knowles. Hey, Tom. Tom and I were hanging out in Kauai um, in oh. December, January. Man, sweet. <clears throat> yeah, he lives in Kauai. Uh, I, yeah, he's awesome. But Tom, you have a Kindle publishing business as well, so you guys can rock out oh, on this sure. topic. But <clears throat> basically what David's enlightened me with, and which is really applicable to my business and may very well be applicable to any of you that are currently producing free content online, is that rather than putting out all that free content, uh, which you can still do, you can take that content or future intended content or past free content, mm -hmm. roll it up into a Kindle book, put it out there into the marketplace of Kindle, and easily David's getting sales now on stuff that was previously for free. Mm -hmm. And here's the beauty. Yeah. It becomes now a you're getting paid now for lead generation into your business. Yeah, which is just so sweet. Uh, and um, another thing that I've been doing to, um, you know, the... Kindle sales really track off reviews that you get from people, right? Okay. And so one of the things I've been doing is all, everything free I've done, I've been doing in the past, I'm sort of doing micro monetization now. Okay. And so for all the free uh, meetups I have about uh, marketing and web content generation and Kindle, whatever, what I do is instead of making it free, I tell people, you know, buy the book and do an Amazon review. Okay. And you can do that with, uh, you know, any, any kind of free, like, um, like a lot of people have free like mini consulting sessions and things like that or, or uh, low cost lead generation products they give away to bring people into their funnel. Okay. We'll just turn that into Kindle books. <clears throat> there you go. And the same way with events, go ahead and have free events, but tell people, you know, the admission is, you know, you buy my Kindle book, do, a, do an Amazon review and some people will and some people won't and who cares? And now, get enough. the more of those reviews you get. Oh, the more, the higher your book gets in the Amazon ranks. And then... That translates into more people becoming aware of you, more sales. And yeah, well, the way it works is is the you think of Am, the Amazon Kindle, all the categories as a tree. So the, all of Kindle books is a big trunk, and then each little category is a leaf node. And so as your as your book gets more reviews, it starts crawling up these leaf nodes and gets higher and higher. And every time it goes up a node, more eyeballs get on the book. Awesome. And so that's um, it's a little bit simplified, but you know, Hollis could probably explain it better. Yeah, right? Hollis could elaborate on it, or you could, or maybe yeah. you, Hollis, and Tom could have a webinar. Well, where... rule of thumb is more eyeballs on the books, then you know, more, more likelihood there's going to be higher sales. So that's the that's the idea. Right on. Now, one other thing for those of you that have physical products. Oh on the yeah. Device, this is a really valuable thing that I yeah. have never even thought of. I'm a. I don't yeah. know anyone else that's doing. I ain't that, the sharp. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, and I'm a little slow sometimes, but. Occasionally, I have it come up with something really cool. I'm going to put this up here and see if I can do this in the camera. Um, if you look, this is like just some sort of random physical product that we sell in all sorts of stores. And if you look over here, there's like a link to Bee Pollen Codex at Amazon.com. So what I was doing was routing people to some random web page on a website and tell you know all this recipes and different uses and the history of this and all sorts of content. The idea being, the idea being to, to engage people to generate more sales. Yeah, to create greater community. Well, I sales. realize I'm sitting here looking at this label and I'm thinking, I don't know how many thousands of people pick these things up in stores all over the country looking at them, but I'm thinking, holy moly, I shouldn't be sending people to a website. I should be sending them to a Kindle book, right? Because if they read something about some random site like Radical Health or Sunfire Superfoods, yeah. that doesn't have near the credibility as saying... <laughs> You know, the bee pollen codex at Amazon.com has more detail about bee pollen, including recipes and uses, I, you know. So this is how David <laughs> operates. David came up with the idea to create this. He came oh, up yeah, with the name of the book. He's put it on a label already, and he's ready to roll it out on a line of products. The book does not yet exist. So i got to write the book before these products, <laughs> the next round of products with these labels hits the shelf. Otherwise, I'm going to be in, in trouble. There you go. So that that's a really cool way then to link with your physical products back onto Amazon, generate Kindle sales, which makes you more credible, and you yeah. know, you're building a larger community. And, you know, it really people really do dig the fact that they're taking a product, especially if they're, if they're ingesting a product or it's for their health, and you know, and now you're an expert in this particular field as well. That's really cool. And what you've just done is you've now ensured if you have a physical product, 
Now you've created a way for them to come back to your business yeah. and ensure that you get them. Now you get greater LTV or lifetime value out of them, whereas you would have lost potentially lost them forever, right? Usually with physical products. Yeah. Uh, and it's he's just created another. You can just create another funnel for paid. You're getting paid now for the lead generation in your business, which I think is invaluable. Yeah, and, and another important thing is the, the the speed. I mean, I had this idea and I thought, holy moly. Yeah. And I changed the label, and I'm unsure if these are shipping yet with this label on them or not. But this means that I've, I've told my shipping guy, the first bottle that you send out with this label, let me know. So that'll give me like two or three days to write the book and get it published on Kindle. There you so go. that's a good way to put your you know feet to the fire and get her done. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of motivation. Get her done. You have to hold on to. Okay, so we're, uh, we're just... Okay, so now a little bit of background on David. So there was some value we hope you guys enjoy. You guys can take away. If you have any questions, obviously... Uh, hit oh, yeah. Any, anytime you you require any help, just let me know. I'm happy to help out. Yeah, and, and David will be new to the Brotherhood. Uh, he's new to the Brotherhood, obviously, and they'll uh, they'll ask you in the comment section below the video. So, um, background about David. So, David has had a company called Fast Websites, and he's done hardware and software development. He's been a hardware and software consultant uh, to some pretty cool people. Uh, and, and we were just adding up the math. He told me when he got started officially... 1979. It was, it was in 1979. And and he tried telling me that that was like 20-something years. And I was like, no, 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 that that's before I was born. Yeah, that's... And I'm, I'm 20, oh, okay. 28 years old. So the I point guess is, I'm looking pretty good for my age. David looks really good for his age. But the point is, uh, he's he has a lot of experience doing... And I don't even know what that means or how it's practical and applicable to you know brothers in the brotherhood. But you got a lot of experience doing development... Yeah, and like coding stuff, and you build you build all sorts of automated elements within your business. You build them yourself. Yeah. Um, so you know one of the coolest things that I lean on David for as his friend and now a fellow brother is I ask him all the time, like um, as an example. Okay, so like as an example, uh, with with my, one of my companies, <clears throat> we do a lot of information publishing. So I'll always share with David a process that I have that involves human beings that you pay for, because <laughs> yeah. he'll generally show me a way to automate that. Um, not that, you know, not that we don't like humans, but he'll show me a way to automate it or wherever there's an opportunity to use a software in place of that human that I have to pay. Right. He'll usually show me where that is, uh, how easily accessible it is, if it's, if it's open source or not. And, and it usually ends up speeding up the whole process and it ends up saving me a lot of money. And, uh, and it's just invaluable to my business. So if there's anything like that in general, uh, David happens to be a coder, the developer himself. Uh, I'm not that person. I have a team that do these things for me, but if you have you know, the team that does it for you or your recorder, or if you have any sorts of generalized questions, uh, you know, feel free to sh reach out to David for that too because he's really, really very valuable in that regard. Yeah, I, I help up people's tech teams quite a bit. I'm all constantly, my Skype is ping, 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 like, help, help. Like, you know, my site's got viruses on it or my site's slow or something, and yeah, I'm happy to help anybody out. For, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give you pointers on where you can send your tech team so they yeah, can do the exactly. work. Yeah, you're not, you're not, you're not uh, volunteering to be No, free, I'm not volunteering to be for somebody's uh, CTO for free. Yeah. Now, one of the other things that David has done mm -hmm. um, is for over 10 years now, uh, he's helped, uh, he created a superfood business 10 years oh, ago, yeah. um, and you've helped a lot of people through that. Um, yeah, we used to run a client practice. Um, and this is another example of automation. Is yeah. I've, I've, I came to a point, like, I don't know, like in 2007, I think it was, and my wife and I were doing like uh, over 100 client hours a week, a week wow. in, our, in our health practice. And I was like, well, I'd like to double my income, but I ain't got 200 hours in a week. How do I do it? Yeah. And um, what I did was I took all the client intake, like the common questions and things. Like if you're a dentist or a chiropractor or whatever, it, whatever you do, you've got certain questions you ask so that you figure out how to talk with the person coming in that's the new person. And so I just roll that all up into what I call the Radical Health Step-by-Step -step Guide. And I published that, and our client hours, this is really astounding to me, in the first 30 days, and the 30 days and I published it from day one to day 30, our client hours went from 100 hours a week down to one a week. Wow. And our revenues went up 300% in go. 30 days. And so what I figured out was the only thing wrong with my, the only thing wrong with my business is I was in it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had to turn that, uh, all that client intake stuff, the, th the stuff that I thought I was important or somehow I had to be involved. I was wrong. I just had to write it up and tell people go read it. So that's going to be kind of, that's oh, going to wow. be my second Kindle book. <clears throat> wow. Yeah.
So that, that that's pretty valuable. So if, there's a <clears throat> there's a lot of you that are also out there. There's uh, friends of mine, uh, other brothers that are in here. Ben Greenfield for Ben Greenfield Fitness. Oh, Abel, cool. <clears throat> Abel James Bascom. Um, number of you guys in here in the health world. I don't mean to be leaving any of you out. Um, but there's a number of guys in here that you guys can pow wow with David. He uh, he has uh, a, a very you know we don't we don't promote each other's businesses in the brotherhood. But needless to say, this guy's been around the superfood world uh, for over ten years. Uh, oh yeah, if you he, need any help doing anything in your whatever. yeah, like if you have any questions about health nutrition, this is a great resource. David's a great resource for you. Uh, if you're curious about the beneficial properties, about a lot, a lot of stuff from health nutrition. I, I'm not going to give the con. You can get well, share the scope. Since there's some fitness guys, I'll give you a little trick. I was talking with probably some of you guys know Keith Baxter. He and I were on the phone the other day talking about how he could use Meetup in his business. I don't think Keith is in the Brotherhood. But... Oh, there's a bunch of people that know Keith though. Yeah. Um, so anyway, he was saying, "Well, you know, if I'd like to abuse Meetup, I mean, use Meetup like <laughs> you do." Whoops. Oh yeah, this is another thing that you. So you're um, getting into Meetup. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about okay. it really quickly. So he's like, "Well." <clears throat> So if I were to start a fitness meetup group near my house in Houston, so I could go like, you know, talk in front of people, he said, how many people do you think I could get for that in Houston? So we added up the numbers, and if you start a new meetup group and you pick your categories right, it's a long conversation, but anyway, we came up with, um, he could reach, uh, meetup would send an email on his behalf, not spam, directly from meetup to their members that were interested in things like holistic health, nutrition, Fitness, uh, MMA was another one uh, that most people miss. Um, what else? Raw food, diet is a big one, vegetarianism, veganism. We came up with um, the email meetup would send out to all these niches would be over 100,000. Wow. Just in fitness, now this is interesting, in Houston there were 10,000 people in the fitness category waiting to get email about fitness. In Austin there were over 15,000 people. Wow. So Austin's another good place. So meetup, I mean, it, you know, it's for me, it's the first uh, traffic generation technology I use when I'm doing a new project uh -huh. to validate to <clears throat> validate um, uh, new ideas, to test book titles, because you can reach in any small place like, I don't know, Austin is only a couple million people or a million something anyway. I, I can reach 50,000 people just by starting a meetup group and test to see if a topic is good or not, uh -huh. just instantly. So. so there you go. So you guys may, you know, some of you may have already been aware of the potential that Meetup offers you uh, for virtually free. Is that correct? It's like 140 bucks a year. Yeah, it's like 144 bucks a year for all the email you could send. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to be for smart free. about it now because you've got to interact with the, the Meetup trolls, is what I call them, people <laughs> that determine if you're breaking their terms of service or not. So you have to figure out how to sort of bend the terms of service. Yeah. So. Well, that, that's great then because, you know, I wasn't aware of that when David first shared it with me. Meetup.com offers you the opportunity to utilize it for sending emails for free <clears throat> to huge, uh, very relevant uh, areas and topics of interest to people Meet, that are right there in your locality. E email that gets delivered and opened. Email that gets delivered By and people opened. in your niche. <laughs> people in your niche. And for those of you that are doing email marketing, you know, you know that that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars sometimes to send, yep. uh, you know, to, to, to people of that nature. So that's really valuable. Um, I really learned too much. Yeah, uh, you know, one one thing that I will because a lot oftentimes I find a lot of the people that I introduce to the Brotherhood are really shy with their introductions, uh, and so I'm not going to let David be shy here because I'm on video. He was silly enough to let me hop in this video, <laughs> but the point is, David David understands a greater degree of um, how to validate uh, a health. What do I call it? Health, a health product, a health. Well, any kind of product. And, really. and, any kind of any kind yeah. of product in the health world. He's gone to greater lengths to to. Oh, you're kind of talking about validating the quality now. Of the yeah, product. yeah. The, the quality of the product uh, than than anyone I've ever met before. Uh, he shared with me his protocols for doing so, <laughs> which is really very important to me. Uh, and I just yeah. thought it was really intelligent uh, the way that you went about it. So for any of you, any of you out there in the health in the in the brotherhood that have your own health business that are interested in you know maybe representing a physical product or maybe even just talking more so about individual products and sharing them more so with your audiences well you know it's a good thing too to know how to test your products for cheap because yeah. that's i mean testing products are really expensive and, and figuring out how to incrementally test incoming ingredients if you're making stuff yeah which um we learned really quick how to optimize because we run i mean basically i run our whole global business the health business one one guy here yeah, and you know everything's run by automated systems, so yeah, that means that my time has to be optimized uh -huh. for that. 
So, so there, there's a lot of value that David can share in that. Mm -hmm. So he's uh, he's got the software, hardware, you know, website design, development, d development aspect. He's got the health component, uh, and <laughs> and now he's doing now he's pretty much automating the entirety of his offline business. You be putting it all on Amazon, automating it even more. Yeah, so, so all all of my um, I took a inventory of um, all the health articles that I've written. I've written like that I have copies of over a thousand health articles and four thousands of hours of audios. So four thousand hours of audios, every hour I talk converts to about thirty pages of a book. That's a lot of freaking pages of books. Yeah, it's a lot of content. So I'm gonna move all my content, all the free content I've had in the past, I'm just gonna unpublish an article at a time, move it to, to Amazon, and take all my physical products and put in and just be done with the whole thing. Yeah, which is for any of you that have the free, I think that's a really, like that alone, just that one thing alone for those of you that have free content up on your website, oh, you yeah. know that people aren't going back and indexing the art, you know, aren't reading the archive stuff majorly. You know, sometimes we have to then have our teams or, or ourselves go out and republish that information just to get it out there in front of the public. And oftentimes mm -hmm. it's dated because the original date of the article. Yeah. So, you know, that, that one tip is, is great. But Oh, one, one little thing about uh, publish on Kindle that you ought to know that freaking took me two months interacting with Amazon customer server, the service that you got to know if you're using Kindle, is that whenever you're updating a Kindle book, you're going from edition 8 to edition 9. In other words, you're fixing typos or adding things in that people said, well, help me understand this better, or you add some content. Just because you republish doesn't mean your old customers get that book. Okay. And so you have to go through, um, and I did a video. If anybody's interested, you contact me, and I'll send you to wherever it is on YouTube, is you have to go through this special sequence where you contact Kindle support, and you give them this specially formatted email that, is, that specifically says, like, this AISN number, this title, uh, edition, such and such, there were major changes, and you enumerate. I've got a change log that I publish for every book, and so you should tell my old customers they should get an update. Yeah. You have to do that every time, or they never update <clears throat> your book, That's ever. Good so then you end up with all these customers that buy a book at edition 10, 11, 12, 13, and you publish 14, and people buy 14, but now you've got all these different editions. Uh -huh. So you have to you have to go through this cycle to make sure everybody's got a fresh copy. Otherwise, you have customers calling saying, Chapter what? Yeah. My book only goes to Chapter 10, and you're talking about Chapter 13. Where's my Chapter 13? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's, a, that's, a fun, that's I mean, it's something you, you know, until you start publishing on Kindle, you, you never figure that out. That's another valuable piece. So new to me. We just wanted to, we wanted to give you a brief intro as to who he is, and thank you very much for oh, sharing that value. Uh, Good this, to meet all you guys. <clears throat> gentleman, this gentleman here is a real brother. He's as you can see, he's an incredible resource of really valuable stuff for you. Thank you very much for being a part of the group, David. You're and thanks, Sean, for uh, for uh, extending the invitation. Yep, Sean. Thanks. And uh, if you guys have any questions for David, hit him up. And otherwise, uh, if you're if you're coming on through Austin, Texas, make sure to. Oh yeah. Up. Yeah, be sure when you're in the Austin. I mean, it's kind of a, a rolling mastermind here in my office. So anytime you're in Austin, just come on around, and there's usually some interesting people here. Yeah, there you go. Awesome. Cool. Later, brothers. Ciao.